So we've had over 50 years now since the implementation of the 1967 Abortion Act. Since then, over 10 million unborn children have lost, lost their lives and countless mothers, families, fathers have all been hurt. So that's really important that we're here today to remember those lives that have been lost and hurt by abortion. So today we are here in Edinburgh to speak up for the unborn children. Since 1967, act, more than 10 million babies have been killed as a result of abortion, and also for the women who have been damaged as a result of abortion. So we have more than 100 people here um, holding pro-life signs to be a voice for the voice. It's been a while since I've done one of these things, and so I felt I really wanted to get back out onto the pro-life scene. I was here last year, and I think it's just a good opportunity to continue being involved in pro-life work and activism. I have some of my friends here so it's quite nice to be with them and to do this together with them. I'm a strong believer in SPUC and I take a strong uh, pro-life uh, position in Parliament and elsewhere but uh, I think for me you know the key thing is that I'm here as a, rep a parliamentarian to speak for people that don't have a voice and that can be different sections of society but I mean one clear uh, section of society that does not have a voice are unborn babies and they should have rights, they do have rights and they need somebody to speak for them, they can't speak for themselves so I, I would want to speak for them here or in Parliament. I think it's important to be here to show that you can be pro-woman and pro-woman's rights and also pro-life um, and actually to show, you know, we, it is it's an issue everyone can have a say on. I think it's massively important that we have men and women, yeah. but particularly for women to stand up and say this is something I believe in and it's something that I, I'm happy to stand for as a woman. 550 babies have been killed in the womb every day and people behind me are trying to say that abortion is healthcare and they're hiding behind euphemisms um, and instead of highlighting the reality of abortion which is barbaric. So you can see their signs, some of which are quite um, derogatory in nature. However, we have a stack of other encouraging pro-life signs here that are marking the humanity and sanctity of human life. It's very peaceful and very quiet and I would have to say I also visited outside the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. I was at the pro-life vigil uh, during the 40 days and uh, again very quiet and very peaceful. So I mean the, the idea that we need legislation to restrict demonstrations like this or vigils like this, it's just absolute nonsense. I think it's really hypocritical that there's pro-abortion counter demonstrators here today. Um, routinely they say to pro-life people, um, be in public places, not near abortion clinics and not near hospital facilities. Note that we're in a public place, they're still here to counter our demonstration. So I think this shows that this isn't about buffer zones, this is about an intolerance of pro-life people and making sure that the pro-life person and presence is stamped out from every element of society. Pleased to see so many different types of people, young and old, from different backgrounds, religious and some are not, uh, as well, who are speaking up for the unborn and women who are post abortive and damaged as a result of abortions. I just think it's a really important day to stand up for the millions of babies that have been slaughtered in the womb, and like I said before, they have no voice. So, unlike other victim groups, we need people out today, we need people speaking up for them. And it's so important, never underestimate, never tire of doing good, uh, is what I would say to anyone who maybe is thinking maybe I could do it next year. And I encourage you to, yeah, join us.